Dear brothers and sister, today we will discuss the full story of Isa. Please watch till the end so you don't miss any new and valuable information that we are going to discuss. Let's begin. The Birth of Isa Isa, known as Jesus in Christianity, holds a significant place in Islam as one of the greatest prophets. His story begins with the miraculous conception by his mother, Mariam, Mary, a woman revered in Islam for her piety, chastity, and dedication to Allah. Mariam's lineage traces back to the noble family of Imran, and she is highly respected as the mother of one of the most significant figures in Islamic tradition. Mariam's story is remarkable from the beginning. She was born into a family noted for their devotion to Allah. Her mother, Hana, was a devout woman who longed for a child and vowed to dedicate her offspring to the service of Allah if her prayers were answered. When Mariam was born, her mother was true to her promise and brought her to the temple where she was placed under the guardianship of the prophet Zachariah. Zechariah. Under Zachariah's care, Mariam grew up in an atmosphere of spiritual purity and constant worship. She spent her days in prayer, contemplation, and service, becoming known for her exceptional piety and dedication to Allah. Her purity and devotion were unparalleled, and she was greatly respected by the people around her. The Quran describes a moment of profound significance in Mariam's life when an angel, identified as Gabriel, appeared to her in the form of a man. This visitation was a moment of divine intervention, signaling a monumental event in the history of humanity. Gabriel approached Mariam with a message from Allah, informing her of her selection for a miraculous event that would change the course of history. He told her that she was chosen by Allah for her purity and righteousness, and that she would bear a son named Isa, who would be a sign for humanity and a mercy from Allah. Mariam was initially astonished and fearful. The idea of conceiving a child without having been touched by a man was beyond her comprehension. She expressed her astonishment to the angel, questioning how such a thing could happen when she had not been involved with any man. Gabriel reassured her, explaining that the conception of Isa was a decree from Allah, and that his power encompasses all things. The angel's message was clear. Allah had decided, and it would be done. This profound moment marked the beginning of a miraculous journey for Mariam. The angel's words comforted her, and she accepted the divine decree with faith and submission to Allah's will. As per the Quranic narrative, the angel then breathed into her through the spirit commanded by Allah, and Mariam conceived Isa without any physical interaction with a man. The news of her pregnancy was both a blessing and a trial for Mariam. The societal norms and expectations of her time made her situation extremely challenging. As her pregnancy progressed, she sought solitude, retreating to a remote and secluded place to avoid the inevitable scrutiny and judgment from her community. When the time for delivery approached, Mariam faced the intense pains of childbirth alone. The Quran poignantly describes her distress and the overwhelming nature of her labor. In her anguish, she cried out, wishing for death to avoid the public disgrace and hardship she anticipated. This moment highlights her humanity and the immense burden she bore, both physically and emotionally. In her time of need, divine assistance came to Mariam. A voice called out to her from beneath, believed to be either the angel Gabriel or the newborn Isa himself, offering comfort and guidance. The voice instructed her to shake the trunk of a nearby palm tree, from which fresh dates would fall for her to eat. Additionally, a stream of water appeared at her feet, providing her with the sustenance she needed during this critical time. These miraculous provisions not only sustained her physically, but also served as a sign of Allah's support and mercy. After the birth of Isa, Mariam faced the daunting task of returning to her people with her newborn son. 
She knew that her situation would raise questions and accusations, given the miraculous nature of Issa's conception. The societal norms of her time dictated that an unmarried woman bearing a child would be subjected to severe scrutiny and possible condemnation. As Miriam approached her community, carrying the infant Issa, the people immediately began to question her. They were astonished and suspicious, unable to comprehend how such an event could occur. Their questions were filled with doubt and accusation, reflecting the societal stigma attached to her situation. Mariam, however, remained silent, adhering to the command of Allah. Instead of defending herself verbally, she pointed to her infant son. This act of faith and reliance on Allah's wisdom led to one of the most extraordinary moments in Islamic tradition. The newborn Isa, by the will of Allah, spoke from his cradle, addressing the people directly. Isa's first words were a profound declaration of his identity and mission. He proclaimed himself to be a servant of Allah, a prophet sent to guide humanity. He affirmed that Allah had blessed him and had enjoined upon him prayer and charity as long as he lived. This miraculous speech served as a powerful sign to the people, validating Mariam's purity and the divine nature of Isa's birth. The speaking infant left the community in awe, dispelling their doubts and accusations. Isa's words were not only a defense of his mother, but also a testament to the divine mission he was to undertake. This event marked the beginning of Isa's life as a prophet, a life that would be characterized by miraculous events and a profound message of monotheism and righteousness. The story of Isa's birth in Islam underscores the themes of faith, divine intervention, and the power of Allah. It highlights the extraordinary nature of his conception and the purity of Maryam, a woman chosen for a unique and monumental role in the divine plan. The miraculous events surrounding his birth serve as signs for humanity, emphasizing the importance of trust in Allah's wisdom and mercy. Isa's birth is celebrated in Islam not only for its miraculous nature, but also for the profound message it carries. It is a story that reflects the unity of Allah's prophets and the continuity of the divine message throughout history. Mariam's faith and devotion, coupled with Isa's miraculous speech, symbolize the triumph of divine truth over human doubt and the eternal significance of Allah's guidance. In summary, the birth of Isa in Islam is a narrative filled with divine miracles, profound faith, and a testament to the power and mercy of Allah. Maryam's unwavering devotion and the miraculous conception and birth of Isa highlight the themes of purity, divine intervention, and the continuity of Allah's message to humanity. This chapter sets the stage for the remarkable life and mission of Isa, a prophet destined to play a pivotal role in guiding humanity towards the worship of the one true God. The Miraculous Birth The birth of Isa, Jesus, in Islam, is a story filled with divine intervention, miraculous events, and profound symbolism. After the angel Gabriel, Jibril, had delivered Allah's message to Maryam, Mary, she accepted her fate with faith and submission. The miraculous conception was a testament to Allah's power, but the journey of Isa's birth was yet to unfold, marked by trials and divine assistance. Maryam, bearing the responsibility of this miraculous pregnancy, chose to retreat from her community. She moved to a remote and secluded place, away from the prying eyes and potential judgment of her people. This period of seclusion allowed her to focus on her spiritual connection with Allah and prepare for the monumental event ahead. The Quranic narrative emphasizes her solitude and the strength she derived from her faith during this time. As the days progressed, Maryam's pregnancy advanced and the time for delivery approached. 
the labor pains were intense, and she found herself in great distress. The Quran describes this moment vividly, capturing the physical and emotional agony she endured. Mariam, in her pain, cried out, expressing a deep sense of despair and wishing for death to avoid the public shame and hardship she anticipated. This cry was a poignant reflection of her humanity and the overwhelming nature of her situation. In her moment of despair, divine assistance came to Mariam. A voice called out to her from beneath, offering comfort and guidance. This voice, believed to be either the angel Gabriel or the newborn Isa himself, reassured her, instructing her on what to do. The voice told her not to grieve and directed her to shake the trunk of a nearby palm tree. Despite her weakened state, Mariam obeyed and miraculously, fresh, ripe dates fell from the tree. Additionally, a stream of water appeared at her feet, providing her with the necessary sustenance during this critical time. These provisions were more than just physical nourishment. They were signs of Allah's mercy and support. The dates, known for their nutritional value, provided her with strength, while the water refreshed and hydrated her. This miraculous intervention highlighted the divine care that surrounded Mariam, reinforcing her faith and fortitude. After the birth of Isa, Mariam faced the daunting task of returning to her community with her newborn son. She knew that her situation would raise questions and accusations, given the miraculous nature of Isa's conception. The societal norms of her time dictated that an unmarried woman bearing a child would be subjected to severe scrutiny and possible condemnation. As Mariam approached her community carrying the infant Isa, the people immediately began to question her. They were astonished and suspicious, unable to comprehend how such an event could occur. Their questions were filled with doubt and accusation reflecting the societal stigma attached to her situation. Mariam, however, remained silent, adhering to the command of Allah. Instead of defending herself verbally, she pointed to her infant son. This act of faith and reliance on Allah's wisdom led to one of the most extraordinary moments in Islamic tradition. The newborn Isa, by the will of Allah, spoke from his cradle addressing the people directly. Isa's first words were a profound declaration of his identity and mission. He proclaimed himself to be a servant of Allah, a prophet sent to guide humanity. He affirmed that Allah had blessed him and had enjoined upon him prayer and charity as long as he lived. This miraculous speech served as a powerful sign to the people, validating Mariam's purity and the divine nature of Isa's birth. The speaking infant left the community in awe, dispelling their doubts and accusations. Isa's words were not only a defense of his mother, but also a testament to the divine mission he was to undertake. This event marked the beginning of Isa's life as a prophet, a life that would be characterized by miraculous events and a profound message of monotheism and righteousness. The story of Isa's birth in Islam underscores the themes of faith, divine intervention, and the power of Allah. It highlights the extraordinary nature of his conception and the purity of Maryam, a woman chosen for a unique and monumental role in the divine plan. The miraculous events surrounding his birth serve as signs for humanity, emphasizing the importance of trust in Allah's wisdom and mercy. Isa's birth is celebrated in Islam, not only for its miraculous nature, but also for the profound message it carries. It is a story that reflects the unity of Allah's prophets and the continuity of the divine message throughout history. Maryam's faith and devotion, coupled with Isa's miraculous speech, symbolize the triumph of divine truth over human doubt and the eternal significance of Allah's guidance. In summary, the birth of Isa in Islam is a narrative filled with divine miracles, profound faith, and a testament to the power and mercy of Allah.
Mariam's unwavering devotion, and the miraculous conception and birth of Isa highlight the themes of purity, divine intervention, and the continuity of Allah's message to humanity. This chapter sets the stage for the remarkable life and mission of Isa, a prophet destined to play a pivotal role in guiding humanity towards the worship of the one true God. The Ministry of Isa The ministry of Isa, Jesus in Islam, is a period marked by divine guidance, miraculous events, and profound teachings. From a young age, Isa exhibited signs of his unique mission and connection with Allah. His ministry began in earnest as he grew into adulthood, spreading the message of monotheism, compassion, and righteousness. Isa was endowed with the Gospel, Injil, as a revelation from Allah, a scripture that confirmed the Torah, Taurat, and provided further guidance to the children of Israel. His teachings emphasized the worship of Allah alone and adherence to His commandments. Isa's mission was to call his people back to the true faith, to reform their spiritual practices, and to correct the deviations that had crept into their religious life. One of the most significant aspects of Isa's ministry was his performance of miracles. These miracles were signs from Allah, intended to validate his prophethood and demonstrate the power of the divine. By Allah's permission, Isa performed numerous miracles that astonished and inspired those who witnessed them. These acts were not only extraordinary, but also carried deep symbolic meanings, underscoring his message and mission. Among the first of Isa's miracles was speaking as an infant, a sign of his prophetic nature from the very beginning. As he grew, his miracles became more pronounced. Isa healed those who were afflicted with various ailments including the blind and the lepers. His touch and prayers brought sight to those who had been blind from birth and cleansed those suffering from leprosy, restoring their health and dignity. Another significant miracle was Esau's ability to bring the dead back to life. This act, performed by the will and permission of Allah, demonstrated the ultimate power over life and death. Isa called upon Allah's name and commanded the dead to rise, and they did, returning to life before the eyes of the astonished onlookers. This miracle not only affirmed Isa's divine mission, but also served as a powerful reminder of Allah's omnipotence. Isa also created birds from clay. He would fashion a figure of a bird from clay, breathe into it, and it would become a living bird by Allah's command. This miracle symbolized the creative power of Allah and Isa's role as a prophet endowed with divine abilities. Each miracle reinforced his message, showing that his powers were granted by Allah and served to guide people to the truth. Beyond his miracles, Isa's teachings were central to his ministry. He preached about the importance of faith, compassion, humility, and devotion to Allah. Isa emphasized the spiritual over the material, urging his followers to seek righteousness and piety. His messages often challenged the established religious authorities and societal norms, calling for a return to the core values of the faith. Isa's parables and sermons were profound and transformative. He spoke of the kingdom of Allah, describing it as a realm where righteousness, justice, and mercy prevailed. He taught that entry into this kingdom required sincere faith, moral integrity, and a compassionate heart. Isa's teachings resonated deeply with those who were marginalized and oppressed, offering them hope and a vision of divine justice. However, Isa's growing influence and his challenge to the status quo brought him into conflict with the religious authorities of his time. The priests and leaders saw Isa as a threat to their power and influence. His message of reform and his emphasis on inner spirituality undermined their authority and exposed their hypocrisy. This opposition was rooted in fear and jealousy, as they saw their control over the people being eroded by Isa's teachings. The authorities plotted against Isa, seeking to undermine his ministry and discredit him. Despite their efforts, 
Issa's message continued to spread, drawing more followers who were inspired by his teachings and miracles. His compassion for the poor, his advocacy for justice, and his unwavering commitment to Allah's message resonated with many, further fueling the authorities' animosity. Issa's disciples, a group of loyal followers, played a crucial role in his ministry. They accompanied him, learned from his teachings, and witnessed his miracles. These disciples were tasked with spreading Issa's message and continuing his work after him. They faced challenges and persecution, but remained steadfast in their faith, committed to the mission of their prophet. One of Esau's most notable teachings was his emphasis on the oneness of Allah and the rejection of idolatry and polytheism. He called for the worship of Allah alone, without partners or intermediaries. This message was a continuation of the monotheistic teachings of previous prophets and a reaffirmation of the covenant between Allah and his people. Isa also taught about the importance of love and mercy. He emphasized loving one's neighbor and even one's enemies, advocating for forgiveness and reconciliation. His teachings on mercy extended to all aspects of life, urging his followers to show kindness to the poor, the sick, and the downtrodden. Isa's message was one of compassion and empathy, reflecting the merciful nature of Allah. Despite the opposition he faced, Isa remained committed to his mission. He continued to preach, perform miracles, and guide his followers. His ministry was a testament to his unwavering faith and dedication to Allah's message. Isa's life and teachings left an indelible mark on his followers and the broader religious landscape. The climax of Isa's ministry came with the plot against his life. The religious authorities, unable to counter his influence, conspired to kill him. They sought the help of one of his disciples, Judas, Yehuda, to betray him. This act of betrayal was a pivotal moment in Isa's ministry, leading to the events that would define his legacy in Islamic tradition. According to Islamic belief, Allah intervened to protect Isa from the plot against him. The Quran states that it appeared to the conspirators that they had crucified Isa, but in reality Allah had raised him to himself. Another man made to resemble Isa was crucified in his place. This miraculous event ensured that Isa was saved from the crucifixion, preserving his honor and mission. Isa's ascension to heaven marked the end of his earthly ministry, but not the end of his influence. Islam teaches that Isa will return at the end of times, a key figure in the eschatological narrative. His second coming will be a time of justice and peace, where he will defeat the false messiah, Dajjal, and establish the true faith of Islam. Isa's ministry in Islam is a profound example of divine guidance miraculous power, and unwavering faith. His teachings continue to inspire millions of Muslims around the world, emphasizing the core values of monotheism, compassion, and righteousness. Isa's life and message are integral to the Islamic faith, reflecting the unity of all prophets in their mission to guide humanity towards the worship of the one true God, Allah. The plot against Isa, the ministry of Isa, Jesus, was marked by his profound teachings and miraculous acts, which attracted a significant following and posed a threat to the established religious authorities. As Isa's influence grew, so did the hostility towards him from those who felt their power and authority were being undermined. This tension eventually culminated in a conspiracy to end his life, a plot deeply rooted in fear, envy, and the desire to maintain control. The religious leaders of Isa's time were the scribes, Pharisees, and priests who held significant sway over the religious and social life of the people. They were wary of Isa's growing popularity and the radical nature of his teachings. Isa preached a return to sincere worship, emphasizing inner purity and devotion to Allah over outward rituals 
and adherence to legalistic traditions. His message of compassion, justice, and the oneness of Allah resonated with the masses, particularly the marginalized and oppressed, further alienating the religious elite. Isa's miracles, such as healing the sick, restoring sight to the blind, cleansing lepers, and even raising the dead, were seen as undeniable signs of his prophethood. These acts not only drew people to his message but also served as a direct challenge to the religious authorities who could not replicate such feats. Isa's ability to perform these miracles by Allah's permission was a testament to his divine mission and this threatened the status quo maintained by the religious leaders. The tension between Isa and the religious authorities reached a boiling point as they became increasingly desperate to silence him. They perceived Isa as a blasphemer and a heretic, someone who questioned their authority and exposed their hypocrisy. The leaders convened secret meetings to discuss how they could eliminate this threat. Their plotting was not just a matter of religious dispute, but also a power struggle, as Isa's teachings challenged the very foundations of their control over the people. The religious authorities' plot to kill Isa involved recruiting one of his own disciples, Judas Iscariot, Yehuda. Judas, motivated by greed or disillusionment, agreed to betray Isa for 30 pieces of silver. This act of betrayal was pivotal in the unfolding drama, as it provided the authorities with the opportunity they needed to capture Isa without causing an uproar among his followers who revered him as a prophet and miracle worker. According to Islamic tradition, the night of the betrayal, Isa was with his disciples in a garden when Judas led the authorities to him. This moment is charged with tension and drama, as Judas identified Isa to the soldiers with a kiss, a prearranged signal. However, in Islam, it is believed that Allah intervened at this critical juncture. As the soldiers moved to arrest Isa, a miraculous event occurred. Allah caused one of the disciples, or Judas himself according to some interpretations, to resemble Isa. The soldiers, deceived by this divine intervention, arrested the wrong man, believing they had captured Isa. Isa, meanwhile, was saved from their clutches by Allah's will. The Quran explicitly states that Isa was not crucified nor killed, but it appeared so to the conspirators. Allah raised Isa to himself, an event that signifies both divine protection and the elevation of Isa to a place of honor. This miraculous ascension is a cornerstone of Islamic belief, affirming that Isa's mission was not cut short by his enemies, but was instead part of Allah's greater plan. The man who was made to resemble Isa faced the fate intended for Isa. He was subjected to the humiliation, torture, and eventual crucifixion meant for Isa. This event served as a severe test for Isa's followers, who were left in confusion and grief, believing their prophet had been killed. However, Allah's wisdom in this matter was profound, as it preserved Isa's dignity and his role in the divine plan for humanity. Isa's ascension is not the end of his story in Islam, but a transition to another phase of his mission. Islamic eschatology holds that Isa will return to earth towards the end of times. His second coming is a significant aspect of Islamic belief, prophesied to bring about justice and restore true faith. Isa's return will be marked by his role in defeating the false messiah, Dajjal, a figure of great evil and deception who will mislead many. Isa's defeat of the Dajjal will be a decisive victory for truth and righteousness. During his second coming, Isa will join forces with the Mahdi, a righteous leader expected to emerge in the end times. Together, they will establish a period of peace and justice, during which Isa will lead the believers, uphold the true teachings of Islam, and correct the misinterpretations and deviations that have arisen over time. Isa's role as a just ruler and a unifier will be crucial in this period, guiding humanity back to the path of righteousness. Isa's return will also involve significant reforms, 
he will break the cross, symbolizing the rejection of the false beliefs that have been attributed to him, and he will kill the swine, representing the cleansing of practices that are contrary to Islamic teachings. Isa will abolish the jizya, tax on non-Muslims, as his return will herald a time when all will embrace Islam, and the need for such distinctions will cease. Isa's second coming will be a time of great spiritual renewal. He will teach the true message of Islam, emphasizing monotheism, compassion, and justice. Isa's presence will inspire a global movement towards faith and piety, uniting humanity under the banner of Islam. His leadership will exemplify the qualities of mercy, wisdom, and unwavering devotion to Allah. The plot against Isa, therefore, is not just a historical event, but a pivotal moment in a divine narrative that spans past, present, and future. It underscores the themes of divine protection, the triumph of truth over falsehood, and the continuity of Allah's plan for humanity. Isa's story in Islam is one of resilience, faith, and ultimate victory, serving as a source of inspiration and guidance for Muslims across the world. Isa's ascension and the promise of his return highlight the interconnectedness of the prophets and their shared mission to guide humanity towards Allah. Isa's life, teachings, and the miraculous events surrounding him are integral to the Islamic understanding of prophecy and divine intervention. His story is a testament to the power of faith and the enduring legacy of Allah's messengers. The plot against Isa and his miraculous protection by Allah encapsulate a profound narrative of faith, divine wisdom, and the ultimate triumph of righteousness. Isa's ministry, marked by miracles and profound teachings, faced opposition and betrayal, yet it culminated in a divine intervention that preserved his honor and mission. Isa's story continues to inspire and guide, with his second coming eagerly awaited as a time of justice, peace, and spiritual renewal, the second coming of Isa. The story of Isa, Jesus in Islam does not conclude with his ascension to heaven. Rather, his life is part of a larger divine plan that extends into the future culminating in his second coming. This event is a significant aspect of Islamic eschatology, filled with prophecies and profound implications for the end times. Isa's return is seen as a pivotal moment that will bring justice, restore the true faith, and herald a new era of peace and righteousness. Islamic tradition holds that Isa was not crucified, nor did he die, but was raised up by Allah, this ascension is not a final departure from the world, but a temporary withdrawal until the appointed time for his return. The Quran and Hadith, sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, provide insights into the events that will unfold during the end times, and Isa's second coming is central to these eschatological narratives. Isa's return is anticipated to occur during a period of great turmoil and tribulation, the world will be in a state of moral decay, injustice, and widespread misguidance. During this time, a figure known as the Dajjal, the false messiah or antichrist, will emerge. The Dajjal is described as a great deceiver who will claim to be divine and lead many people astray with his false miracles and persuasive rhetoric. His reign will be one of tyranny and oppression exacerbating the suffering of humanity. The emergence of the Dajjal will be a major sign of the approaching Day of Judgment. In this era of darkness and confusion, the need for divine intervention will be paramount. It is during this critical juncture that Isa will descend from the heavens. According to Hadith, Isa will descend near a white minaret in the eastern part of Damascus, Syria, wearing two garments lightly dyed with saffron, with his hands resting on the wings of two angels. Isa's descent will be a momentous event, filled with awe and reverence. His return will signify the beginning of the end for the Dajjal and the forces of evil. 
Issa will pursue the Dajjal and ultimately confront him, leading to a decisive battle. The Hadith narrates that Isa will kill the Dajjal at a place called Lida, near Jerusalem. This victory will mark the end of the Dajjal's reign of terror and deceit. Following the defeat of the Dajjal, Isa will play a crucial role in restoring justice and re-establishing the true teachings of Islam. He will break the cross, symbolizing the rejection of the erroneous beliefs that have been associated with his name and he will kill the swine, representing the abolition of practices that are contrary to Islamic law. Isa will abolish the jizya, tax on non-Muslims, as his return will lead to a time when all people embrace Islam, rendering such distinctions unnecessary. Isa's leadership will usher in a period of unprecedented peace and righteousness. He will rule with fairness and justice, embodying the principles of compassion and mercy. Isa's presence will inspire a global revival of faith, guiding humanity back to the worship of the one true God, Allah. His teachings will emphasize the core values of Islam, monotheism, compassion, charity, and moral integrity. Isa will also unite with the Mahdi, a righteous leader who is expected to appear before Isa's return. The Mahdi, whose name means the rightly guided one, will lead the Muslim community and prepare the way for Isa's arrival. Together, Isa and the Mahdi will defeat the forces of evil, establish justice, and restore the true faith. Their collaboration will symbolize the unity of purpose among Allah's chosen leaders and the fulfillment of divine prophecies. During his time on earth, Isa will engage in various acts of worship and community service. He will lead prayers, deliver sermons, and guide the believers in their spiritual and moral development. Isa's presence will be a source of immense blessing and guidance, reinforcing the teachings of the Quran and the example of the Prophet Muhammad. Isa's return will also bring about significant social and economic reforms. Under his leadership, there will be an era of prosperity and abundance. The world will witness a reduction in poverty and injustice, as Isa's administration will ensure fair distribution of resources and opportunities. His governance will reflect the principles of equity and compassion, addressing the needs of all people, especially the marginalized and oppressed. The period of Isa's rule will be marked by the flourishing of knowledge and wisdom, people will seek to learn and implement the true teachings of Islam, leading to a renaissance of spiritual and intellectual growth. Isa will emphasize the importance of education, ethical conduct, and communal harmony. His teachings will resonate with people of all backgrounds, fostering a sense of unity and shared purpose. Isa's time on Earth will also be a period of environmental harmony, the earth will yield its bounties generously, and there will be a balance between human needs and the natural world. This era of ecological sustainability will reflect the broader principles of stewardship and responsibility that are integral to Islamic teachings. Despite the initial trials and tribulations, Isa's second coming will ultimately lead to a profound transformation of the world. His leadership will pave the way for a society rooted in faith, justice, and compassion. The believers will thrive under his guidance, and the true message of Islam will be firmly established. Isa's mission, however, is not eternal on earth. Islamic tradition holds that he will eventually pass away after fulfilling his divine role. Isa's death will be a significant event and he will be buried in a place of honor beside the Prophet Muhammad in Medina. His passing will mark the completion of his earthly mission, but his legacy will endure, inspiring generations to come. The second coming of Isa is a testament to the continuity and unity of the prophetic mission. It highlights the interconnectedness of the messages brought by all prophets and the ultimate fulfillment of divine promises. 
Isa's return is seen as a manifestation of Allah's mercy and justice, a final opportunity for humanity to embrace the true path before the Day of Judgment. In Islamic eschatology, Isa's second coming serves as a powerful reminder of the transient nature of life and the eternal significance of faith and righteousness. It calls believers to remain steadfast in their devotion to Allah and to uphold the principles of justice, compassion, and truth. Isa's return is a symbol of hope and divine intervention, assuring the faithful that Allah's plan encompasses all times and circumstances. The anticipation of Isa's return also fosters a sense of preparedness among Muslims. Believers are encouraged to live their lives in accordance with Islamic teachings, striving for moral excellence and spiritual growth. The promise of Isa's second coming motivates the faithful to remain vigilant against falsehood and to seek the pleasure of Allah in all their endeavors. The second coming of Isa is a pivotal event in Islamic eschatology, filled with profound spiritual and moral implications. Isa's return will herald a new era of justice, peace and righteousness, fulfilling divine prophecies and guiding humanity back to the true path. His mission will address the challenges of the end times, defeat the forces of evil, and establish the true teachings of Islam. Isa's second coming is a testament to the enduring power of faith and the ultimate triumph of divine justice. Isa's role in Islamic eschatology. Isa, Jesus, one of the most revered prophets in Islam, holds a crucial role in Islamic eschatology. His significance extends beyond his earthly ministry to his anticipated return during the end times, an event that is intricately detailed in both the Quran and Hadith. Islamic eschatology, or the study of the end times, includes a series of major and minor signs that precede the Day of Judgment, with Isa's return being one of the most important. Isa's eschatological role is deeply intertwined with the appearance of the Dajjal, the false messiah or antichrist. The Dajjal is described in Islamic texts as a deceiver who will mislead many with his false claims of divinity and miraculous abilities. The emergence of the Dajjal is seen as a period of severe tribulation, marked by widespread corruption, injustice, and disbelief. The Dajjal's reign will be characterized by tyranny and oppression, testing the faith of believers. Amid this chaos, the return of Isa is anticipated as a beacon of hope and divine intervention. According to Hadith, Isa will descend from the heavens near a white minaret in the eastern part of Damascus, Syria, during the time of Fajr, dawn prayer. His descent will be marked by his distinctive appearance, wearing two garments lightly dyed with saffron, his hands resting on the wings of two angels. This event will be awe-inspiring and will signal the beginning of the end for the Dajjal and the forces of evil. Isa's primary mission upon his return will be to confront and defeat the Dajjal. This confrontation is a climactic moment in Islamic eschatology, symbolizing the triumph of truth over falsehood. Isa will pursue the Dajjal and eventually kill him at a place called Lydda, near Jerusalem. This victory will mark the end of the Dajjal's deception and tyranny, liberating humanity from his malevolent influence. Following the defeat of the Dajjal, Isa will assume a central role in restoring justice and the true teachings of Islam. He will break the cross, signifying the rejection of the false beliefs that have been attributed to him over the centuries, and he will kill the swine, symbolizing the abolition of practices that are contrary to Islamic law. Isa's actions will clarify and rectify the misunderstandings about his identity and mission, reaffirming his status as a prophet and servant of Allah. Isa will also abolish the jizya, tax on non-Muslims, as a symbol of the universal acceptance of Islam. His return will lead to a time when all people will embrace the true faith, 
rendering such distinctions unnecessary. This era will be marked by a global unity under the banner of Islam, with Isa as the just and compassionate leader. Isa's leadership during this period will be characterized by justice, peace, and righteousness. He will rule with fairness and mercy, addressing the needs of all people and ensuring that the principles of Islam are upheld. Under his guidance, there will be a resurgence of faith and a renewal of spiritual and moral values. Isa's presence will inspire people to seek knowledge, practice charity, and live righteous lives. In addition to his role in defeating the Dajjal, Isa will join forces with the Mahdi, another significant figure in Islamic eschatology. The Mahdi, whose name means the rightly guided one, is expected to emerge before Isa's return. He will lead the Muslim community and prepare the way for Isa's arrival. Together, Isa and the Mahdi will establish a period of unparalleled peace and justice, exemplifying the unity and collaboration of Allah's chosen leaders. Isa's time on earth will also bring about significant social and economic reforms. His administration will ensure that resources are distributed fairly, reducing poverty and inequality. The period of his rule will be marked by abundance and prosperity, with the earth yielding its bounties generously. This era of ecological balance will reflect the broader principles of stewardship and responsibility that are central to Islamic teachings. Isa's presence will also lead to a flourishing of knowledge and wisdom. People will be eager to learn and implement the true teachings of Islam leading to a renaissance of spiritual and intellectual growth. Isa will emphasize the importance of education, ethical conduct, and communal harmony. His teachings will resonate with people of all backgrounds, fostering a sense of unity and shared purpose. Despite the initial trials and tribulations, Isa's return will ultimately lead to a profound transformation of the world. His leadership will pave the way for a society rooted in faith, justice, and compassion. The believers will thrive under his guidance, and the true message of Islam will be firmly established. Isa's mission, however, is not eternal on earth. Islamic tradition holds that he will eventually pass away after fulfilling his divine role. Isa's death will be a significant event and he will be buried in a place of honor beside the Prophet Muhammad in Medina. His passing will mark the completion of his earthly mission, but his legacy will endure, inspiring generations to come. Isa's role in Islamic eschatology is a testament to the continuity and unity of the prophetic mission. It highlights the interconnectedness of the messages brought by all prophets and the ultimate fulfillment of divine promises. Isa's return is seen as a manifestation of Allah's mercy and justice, a final opportunity for humanity to embrace the true path before the Day of Judgment. In Islamic eschatology, Isa's second coming serves as a powerful reminder of the transient nature of life and the eternal significance of faith and righteousness. It calls believers to remain steadfast in their devotion to Allah and to uphold the principles of justice, compassion, and truth. Isa's return is a symbol of hope and divine intervention, assuring the faithful that Allah's plan encompasses all times and circumstances. The anticipation of Isa's return also fosters a sense of preparedness among Muslims. Believers are encouraged to live their lives in accordance with Islamic teachings, striving for moral excellence and spiritual growth. The promise of Isa's second coming motivates the faithful to remain vigilant against falsehood and to seek the pleasure of Allah in all their endeavors. Isa's return will also bring significant interfaith implications. His role in correcting the misunderstandings about his identity will bridge gaps between Muslims and Christians, fostering a deeper understanding and mutual respect. Isa's return will highlight the shared heritage and common values between these two major faiths, promoting peace and harmony. 
Issa's leadership will be marked by his emphasis on social justice and equity. He will address issues of poverty, inequality, and oppression, ensuring that the rights of all individuals are protected. His administration will be a model of ethical governance, reflecting the principles of Islam in action. Issa's reign will demonstrate the potential for a just and compassionate society, guided by divine principles. The environmental harmony during Issa's rule will also be a significant aspect of his eschatological role. The earth will be in a state of balance, with human activities aligning with the natural order. This period of ecological sustainability will be a reflection of the broader spiritual and moral renewal brought about by Isa's leadership. Isa's role in Islamic eschatology underscores the themes of divine justice, mercy, and the ultimate triumph of truth. His second coming will address the challenges of the end times, defeating the forces of evil and establishing the true teachings of Islam. Isa's return will be a time of spiritual revival, social reform, and global unity under the banner of faith. Isa's role in Islamic eschatology is a profound and multifaceted aspect of the faith. His return will herald a new era of justice, peace, and righteousness, fulfilling divine prophecies and guiding humanity back to the true path. Isa's mission will address the challenges of the end times, defeat the forces of evil, and establish the true teachings of Islam. Isa's second coming is a testament to the enduring power of faith and the ultimate triumph of divine justice. The Legacy of Isa in Islam The legacy of Isa, Jesus, in Islam is profound and far-reaching, encompassing his life, his teachings, his miracles, and his anticipated return. Isa's story in Islam is one of divine selection, miraculous birth, prophetic mission, and eschatological significance. His legacy continues to inspire and guide millions of Muslims around the world, offering a model of piety, compassion, and unwavering faith in Allah. Isa's legacy begins with his miraculous birth to Maryam, Mary, a woman revered in Islam for her piety and devotion. Maryam's selection by Allah for this miraculous event underscores her purity and righteousness, setting the stage for Isa's extraordinary life. Isa's birth, free from any male intervention, is a testament to Allah's power and serves as a sign for humanity of His ability to do all things. This miraculous birth is celebrated in Islamic tradition, highlighting the special status of Isa and his mother within the Muslim faith. From his early days, Isa exhibited signs of his prophetic mission. As an infant, he spoke in defense of his mother, declaring his servitude to Allah and his role as a prophet. This miraculous speech not only vindicated Maryam, but also established Isa's divine mission from the very beginning. Isa's early miracles set the tone for his life, characterized by acts that defied natural laws and demonstrated the power of Allah. Isa's prophetic mission was marked by his profound teachings and numerous miracles, all aimed at guiding the children of Israel back to the true worship of Allah. His teachings emphasized monotheism, compassion, humility, and adherence to the moral and spiritual principles laid out in the Torah. Isa's message was one of renewal and reform, calling his people to purify their faith and practices from the corruption and hypocrisy that had crept in over time. One of the most significant aspects of Isa's legacy is his performance of miracles, which were signs from Allah to validate his prophethood. Isa healed the sick, restored sight to the blind, cleansed lepers, and even raised the dead by Allah's permission. Each miracle served a dual purpose, to alleviate suffering and to affirm his divine mission. These acts of compassion and power resonated deeply with the people, drawing them to his message and solidifying his legacy as a prophet endowed with divine abilities. Isa's teachings also focused on social justice and compassion. He advocated for the care of the poor, the sick, 
and the marginalized, emphasizing the importance of charity and kindness. His parables and sermons often highlighted the values of mercy, forgiveness, and love for one's neighbor. Issa's emphasis on these values aligned with the broader Islamic principles of social equity and communal responsibility, reinforcing the ethical framework within which Muslims are called to live. Despite his profound impact and the miracles he performed, Issa faced significant opposition from the religious authorities of his time. They viewed his teachings and growing influence as a threat to their power and control. This opposition culminated in a plot to kill him, a narrative that underscores the challenges faced by prophets in their missions to guide humanity. However, according to Islamic belief, Allah protected Isa from their plot, raising him up to himself and thus preserving his honor and mission. Isa's ascension is a critical element of his legacy, symbolizing his special status and the continuation of his mission beyond his earthly life. Islamic tradition holds that Isa was not crucified, but that it appeared so to his enemies. This belief not only preserves Isa's dignity, but also sets the stage for his anticipated return, an event of immense eschatological significance. The second coming of Isa is a cornerstone of his legacy in Islam. It is believed that he will return during the end times to restore justice and righteousness, defeat the Dajjal, the false messiah, and establish the true teachings of Islam. Isa's return will be a time of great spiritual renewal, where his leadership will guide humanity back to the worship of Allah and the principles of faith, compassion, and justice. This eschatological role cements Isa's legacy as a pivotal figure in the divine plan for humanity. Isa's second coming will also have profound interfaith implications. His role in correcting the misunderstandings about his identity and mission will bridge gaps between Muslims and Christians, fostering greater understanding and mutual respect. Isa's return will highlight the shared heritage and common values between these two major faiths promoting peace and harmony. This aspect of his legacy is particularly significant in today's world, where interfaith dialogue and cooperation are essential for global peace and unity. Isa's legacy in Islam is also reflected in the reverence with which Muslims regard him and his mother, Maryam. Isa is mentioned frequently in the Quran, and his life and teachings are studied and celebrated by Muslims around the world. Maryam, as the mother of Isa, is honored for her piety and devotion, serving as a model of faith and obedience to Allah. Together, their stories inspire Muslims to strive for spiritual and moral excellence. The influence of Isa extends beyond religious teachings to cultural and artistic expressions within the Muslim world. His story has been depicted in various forms of art, literature, and poetry reflecting the deep respect and admiration Muslims have for him. These cultural expressions serve to keep his legacy alive, continually reminding believers of his message and the values he embodied. Isa's legacy also includes the emphasis on the importance of education and knowledge. His teachings encourage the pursuit of knowledge and wisdom, both religious and worldly. This emphasis on learning is a core value in Islam, promoting intellectual growth and understanding. Isa's example as a teacher and healer reinforces the importance of using knowledge for the betterment of society and the spiritual development of individuals. The ethical and moral teachings of Isa have a lasting impact on Muslim communities. His messages of compassion, justice, and humility continue to guide Muslims in their personal and communal lives. The values he espoused are integral to Islamic ethics, influencing how Muslims interact with others and conduct themselves in various aspects of life. Isa's legacy is also evident in the theological discourse within Islam. Scholars and theologians have extensively studied his life, teachings, and eschatological role contributing to a rich body of knowledge that continues to grow. 
This scholarly work ensures that Isa's legacy remains a dynamic and evolving aspect of Islamic thought, constantly enriching the understanding and practice of the faith. In summary, the legacy of Isa in Islam is multifaceted and enduring. It encompasses his miraculous birth, prophetic mission, profound teachings, and anticipated return. Isa's life and message continue to inspire and guide Muslims, offering a model of piety, compassion, and unwavering faith in Allah. His legacy is celebrated in religious, cultural, and intellectual traditions within the Muslim world, reflecting the deep respect and admiration with which he is regarded. The anticipated return of Isa during the end times highlights his ongoing significance in the divine plan for humanity, reinforcing the themes of justice, compassion, and the ultimate triumph of truth. Isa's legacy is a testament to the enduring power of faith and the timeless relevance of his message.